What we have here today is a typical Midwestern field. What we've done is excavated along this uh, soil profile pit wall and you can see the color difference which indicates different levels of organic matter and this allows us to assess some of the rooting patterns that might have been present in this crop. One of the things that producers can do is with the use of a simple pocket knife assess the conditions of their soil and look for the presence of compaction which is a root limiting layer. We can begin by inserting the pocket knife to shallow depth into the soil wall and just gently pulling up. When you start to feel excessive firmness one has probably indicated where the compaction layer begins. Then you can determine how deep that is from the top of the soil surface. In this case, it's about nine and a half or 10 inches from the top. That way, when we go to set machinery to run in the field, we'll use this as a reference point in, in our choosing our depth of our rippers or other field implements. The same thing is done from the top, right here in the seed bed, and then we just gently push down and we start to feel that same firmness oh, at approximately three or four inches from the soil surface. So we've indicated right here a potential hard pan layer. This means we've got a decent seed bed, as you can see by the population and tillering of this wheat crop, which is very good, but not necessarily an ideal root bed. One of the simple tests that a farmer can do in the field to assess water infiltration properties of his soil is to take a simple five gallon pail and cut the top six inches off it and recess it into the soil after dampening an area. A good Midwestern soil should be able to store about 25% by volume of available water for crop growth. In other words, in the top 12 inches of soil, we might want to have three inches of water for root uptake after a nice rainstorm. What we want to take now from the step of finding that compaction layer, and we found it important to just put the point under the layer. This one happens to be a seven inch wide point. That means from the wing to wing. The tip breaks soil out in a pattern like that. All right, now once that soil is broken, we want the wing to do a lift, twist, and roll. And we want to put the tip just below that layer. We found an inch is sufficient so we can keep the least amount of energy for the maximum amount of soil relocation. Another feature we want to look at in terms of assessing our tillage practices is how level they are on the surface and the individual clod size output that is left behind the machine after the tillage pass. One of our goals was to have no clod size bigger than a six inch piece. We found after years of study and millions of manually collected data points that when we have pieces bigger than this, they can put at risk a seedling from emerging properly in the spring, even though several frost cycles and even a spring tillage pass might have occurred prior to planting. Let's examine the, some of the steps we went through. First, we had to find compaction layer if it's present. Number two, that establishes the depth we want to run and the importance then of just being an inch beneath it and then using a wing point to get relocation of fertilizer and residue. Number three, then as we look through that, is how do we leave the finish on top of the surface? And all together combine these factors in helping plants thrive.